Zachariah was a holy man Getting up in years He walked the Ten Commandments So he hadn't much to fear His wife was Elizabeth and She was older too Hadn't any children And they knew they never would The congregation loved them both And prayed outside the temple While Zachariah burning incense In fear froze and trembled See an angel had appeared so real and plain as day to this level-headed holy man and he heard the angel say you fear miracles and angels cause that's what people do my name is gabriel and i have a miracle for you your son will be coming soon and john will be his name and like me he'll foretell miracles zachariah said okay Mary was a simple girl who never had a bow. Joseph was a righteous man. One day they were betrothed. The same angel showed up in their home, saying, Mary, you are blessed. And scared to death, she wondered if she could stand to hear the rest. You fear miracles and angels Cause that's what people do My name is Gabriel And I have a miracle for you But your son will be coming soon the Christ, the light, the way He'll teach the world the greatest truths Mary said, oh Now the angel had it right, you see, and soon near Bethlehem, while shepherds watched o'er their flocks, the angel came to them, and just like those before them, the shepherds stood in fear. Then a star exploded, the night grew bright, and all that they could hear. Gloria in excelsis Deo Gloria in excelsis Deo well, You fear miracles and angels Cause that's what people do My name is Gabriel And I have a miracle for you Your Savior's in your heart The Christ, the light, the way And your mission is to love yourself And to serve On this Christmas day Okay Okay On 
this Christmas That song is an Epley original. Thank you, Steve. So what are we willing to say yes to? What are we willing to open our hearts to? Will we go through this human journey separating the miracle from the human? Will we go with an idea in consciousness that these battle each other, or will we begin on the path, will we awaken to the inner journey of recognizing that miracles happen every day? That in fact we are immersed in a living field of holy consciousness, and just like this birth story, the story has not ended. It is our story here today. But if we make things so grandiose and so far away, so unattainable, we may be in the midst of it and miss it. We may be in the midst of it and miss it. We celebrate the birth of the Christ consciousness in Christmas time. But there was a birth that happened before the demonstration of the physical man, Jesus the Christ, right? There was a birth in a woman, a birth in consciousness, a birth that preceded the physical birth of Jesus the master teacher, the radical rabbi, the way shower. So what happened in Mary that gave her the consciousness to be able to behold a miracle, to behold the truth, to behold the divine insight into who and whose we are and what she was giving life to. She had a lot of opportunities to be stuck in chaos, to fear and tremble, to walk away, to shut down her heart, to believe that there wasn't enough in the world, to believe that her circumstances were dire. But there was something within her that radiated louder than any of the human conditions that surrounded her. And that was her guidance. That was her internal compass. Charles Fillmore teaches us that even, even in the early biblical times when this prophecy of Jesus the Christ came, that it may not so much have been only this idea that the man, Jesus Christ, was going to come, but it was the beginning of the idea in all of humanity that there is a higher vibrational field through which humans can live through. That there is a higher field of vibration than our human nature. And that is the idea that I believe came to Mary came so clearly and so purely that she gave up the world of limited conditions. She gave up the ideas of separation and made herself completely willing and in dedication to a higher purpose. In dedication to birthing the most beautiful and magnificent love and offering that love up into the universe. And as that love was offered up into the universe, it came to be that it was not just her own. It came to be that it was for all of humanity, that it was for the awakening from the human condition, from the sleep, from the slumber. Charles Fillmore, Unity's co-founder, warns us at Christmas time not to get stuck in all of the details of the story, so stuck in worshiping and idealizing the details of the story that we forget the mystical message, that we forget to bring it to ourselves at this time and place, in this day, in this moment, through this consciousness that is each one of us right here and right now. In 1912, in his Christmas sermon, Charles Fillmore said, when we study the life of Jesus Christ and celebrate his birthday, 
It should not be with that external consciousness that thinks about the history, but a deeper understanding of that immortal man, that great Christ principle, which existed in the mind from the beginning, and which Jesus Christ flashed forth, and many other great ones have lighted the world with. He goes on to talk about this epiphany that happens in the mind of humanity, that happens in the carnal mind, that happens in the human condition. That once we get this spark, we recognize and we realize that there's something more. That we're here to be something more. That we live not in a world of limitation, but a world of divine principle And that when we learn to activate and step into alignment with that principle, demonstrations occur. Miracles occur. The universe rushes in to support where it looked like there was no support, where it looked like there was a limit to a condition. That's proved false over and over again. He says that we know that there is a prince of peace, that the kingdom and the ruling power of all men is upon our shoulders, but that we must be born as a child. We must grow in stature, in understanding, and bring this light, this consciousness, into expression. In order for this expression to be born, it's important to look at what comes before to celebrate the birth of this teacher, but also the consciousness that made the birth of this teacher possible, the consciousness that came before. And look into what that has for us. So as we honor the birth of the Christ presence in humanity, in expression, we recognize that that birth was born of pure love, Mary is, was, and represents the field of love consciousness, that field of mothering energy that is so pure that it sees the divine, unmistakable. It sees the divine, it celebrates the divine, and it is willing to walk through anything to allow that expression to come into manifestation. Mary was courageous, mindful, and patient. The walk and the life of Mary doesn't go unnoticed in the evolution of the expression of this Christ demonstration. What were the conditions that supported this Christ consciousness, this birth? Mary is a living lesson in trusting that the right conditions will arrive at the right time. What did she do when she had the divine insight, the divine message that she was with child. She went to gather consciousness. She went for, it says, three months to be with, Mar- with Elizabeth. For three months to be with Elizabeth. That three months is symbolic. Beginning, middle, end. Mind, idea, expression. Three is the trinity the divine source, the expression of that source, the spirit of that source. She went to a place to build her conscious mind so that all of her faculties would be in alignment with following through with the mission that she was given so that she could build up such a strength and such a field of reinforcement that she could not be shaken on her path to do what she was called to do. She, in fact, merged with another feminine nature, going to the house of another woman that was with child, that was birthing a divine idea herself. Have you ever had something occur in mind that is so great you think, I don't know if I could carry that out. What do I need to do? What do I need to do in my being, in my body, in my soul, in my spirit? to solidify this practice, this knowing, to get grounded so I don't waver. Because we know if we waver, we can fall. 
And when we fall, we know that the only thing that we lose is time. The only thing that we lose is time. The divine expressions that are within us are coming forth, just like the birth is coming forth. It is a matter of time that it is coming forth. So how can we solidify ourselves in dedication to the great birth? Even with the concerns of Joseph, I mean, imagine if Mary just argued with him and convinced him for that three months instead of going to Elizabeth. Nah, this is it. This is the big birth. It's happening. It's divinely appointed and wrestled with him. No, she trusted. She had the courage to follow her guidance and the patience, the patience to make space. And what happened? Joseph had his own illumination, his own insight, one that was not given to him by her, but one that belonged to him, that could not be mistaken, that could not be taken away. Even in the midst of Herod calling forth the death of the male children, she had faith, she had patience to walk that path. Even not knowing how or what this would entail, how it would take place, where they would be, where they would go. Slow and steady, she stayed courageous, mindful, patient. It says many times that Mary took things into her heart and pondered them. Took things into her heart and pondered them. But when the world responded with confusion, when the world responded with limitation, with discord, she didn't go out fighting against it. She didn't go out wrestling with the world around her, wrestling with the circumstances. What she did was she went within. In this sacred story, in her practice, there is a blueprint for all of us to uncover the path. In every instance where Mary could have fallen apart, resisted, panicked, struggled, given up, she demonstrated the courage to allow the next step along the path to be revealed to her. The mindfulness to th take things to heart rather than scatter them about and look for confirmation and affirmation in the world outside of her. Patience. Even though she couldn't see it all at one moment, she had the patience to allow it to unfold, to enter into a state of allowing. That state of allowing, that mindfulness and that courage is what makes the way for the enlightened, awakened presence to descend to the fullness of our being and express out from us. She walked through changing, chaotic and challenging and threatening conditions, following her mystical knowing. This mystical knowing is not something that's separate from each of us. It is something that is within all of us. In 1923, Charles Fillmore said that spiritual emanations of the Christ mind are going forth, and by putting ourselves in right relation to them, we are becoming part of the ever-living one. Christ is but another name for Jehovah, and Jehovah means the ever-living one. And it doesn't apply to a man or a God, but that ever-living principle, which is the masculine and feminine expressed in and through man. It exists today it is alive today. So do we have the patience to call it forth? Do we have the patience to birth it? Fillmore goes on to say, Christ doesn't express himself in your consciousness all at once like a conversion in a revival, but you catch the light, you see the possibility, and this conceives in your soul a larger consciousness of yourself. It conceives in your soul a larger consciousness of yourself. The soul is typified in the history of Jesus Christ as Mary, the feminine principle in all. And it first gets the idea of the possibility of a larger consciousness a greater man, and in due season, this man is brought forth and expressed. This is our gift for the Christmas season. 
This is our gift to walk this path with whatever it is in our minds and in our lives, but to tether all of those energies and to direct them, to commit them to the higher birth, the part of self that we know that we know that we know is connected beyond this separate sense of self. In the birth story, it's Herod that represents the ego, the only one that struggled with this, the only one that didn't drop everything and say, yes, I say yes, okay. It was the consciousness that wanted to count, wanted to register, wanted to think, wanted to struggle, wanted to tear apart, wanted to separate, wanted to claim only for oneself. See, the awakening of the birth story within us is that aspect of self that begins to dedicate itself more and more and more to that which is beyond this separate sense of sense consciousness, this separate me. That's what happens every time a mother births a child, right? They see that this birth is for all of life, that it came from us, but it's not limited to us. That it came from us, but it's not the all of us, but that it represents something so pure, so expansive, so unlimited, that it is clearly miraculous. So will we claim the miraculous within us? The late Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen said, patience is power. Patience is not an absence of action. Rather, it is timing. It waits on the right time to act for the right principles and in the right way. Patience is power. When we demonstrate this patience, we allow ourselves to move from a field of limited conditions. Mary dealt with the one thing she could control, the one thing she can control, and that's how she showed up, how she showed up. She couldn't control all of the circumstances, couldn't even control what's going to go on in her body. But she controlled how she showed up. And she chose to show up with patience, with courage, with mindfulness. And that practice aligned her with a principle, allowed her to tap into a principle that was more than her human self, that was in alignment with her mystical self. And when she tapped into that mystical self, everything else came into place at the right time. She was sourced. She had everything she needed. She didn't wrestle with the conflict. She flew over the conflict. And when she controlled the one thing that was in her dominion, which is how she showed up, the principle controlled the rest and offered her a loving, supportive, friendly universe that celebrated her success, that celebrated her birth, celebrated her child, that went to that intuitive nature and followed it, that people came from afar to say, I see it, I see it and I got it too. I got an insight that what you just gave to the world was more than you. So are we willing to walk through the birth story, ourselves? Are we willing to take time and to meditate upon the conditions that will support our transformation, that will support the planetary transformation, and to take the risk of bringing into expression something that is higher than yourself, risking everything for a higher principle, a clear vision, an idea that's been given to you, that's been shown to all of humanity. We have all the opportunities in the world to look at the human condition. We have all the opportunities in the world to look at circumstances. We have all the opportunities in the world to play with a world of limitation. Are we willing to play in the field of principle? Are we willing to challenge ourselves to show up in a way 
that we birth ourselves again. We were born once by our parents. Are we willing to choose to be born again through the consciousness that is available to us? Are we willing to develop the patience in life to open up and to quicken the divine timing of all things when we act on a principle? Charles Fillmore said, the history of Jesus Christ was a symbol of change, of a new step forward, the soul of every man and every woman who realizes the truth of their being a step forward for all of humanity into that new being. He says Christ represented a principle. Mary tapped into a principle, a principle that applies to all and to everyone. He represented a perennial principle constantly being used by man. Christ must be formed in you, or you must reap the reward of his teaching by realizing the steps that he took and follow them in your own history in your own experience. You must know that there is a better and higher life for you to live, that you can grow into that larger man as Jesus grew from a child to manhood. Will we continue to separate ourselves, separate our manhood, our womanhood, separate the aspects of being a normal human being from the mystical path, or will we begin merging them Will we begin allowing them to swim in the same waters and let those waters live in us by stepping away from separating ourselves from the divine, from believing that these stories are entombed long ago? Or will we take up the life force and tap into the same principle that was demonstrated, demonstrated for all of us as the greatest gift to humanity. Charles Fillmore said, we have separated Jesus Christ from ourselves and talked about him as a man when he represents the universal principle, the supreme ideal man, which we all are seeking to put on, to manifest, and to be. It was in my original inception in divine mind, the supreme ideal, the very highest that God could imagine, was born into me, created in me, and it is my privilege to express it. Patience is power. Your birth is divine. Are we willing to say yes? Namaste.